Coming to you live from the Cowboys headquarters in Frisco. Deep in the heart of Texas, it's the star at night. Wow, dramatic much? Why are you getting in the way of my intro? You mean our intro? We're your hosts. I'm Kelsey Charles. And I'm David Hellman. Okay, let's just start this show now. <laughs> what is up, everyone? It is Rush Hour. The Cowboys backup quarterback led the Dallas Cowboys to a 6-1 record over the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to hear that enough times on Sunday that I figured I'd share it. I figured I'd pass the with buck. conviction. Um, I'll do it again if you want. I, they I do don't. it every they do it every five minutes, win or lose. Yeah. Clearly, since they lost. I mean, I heard the environment was great, but um, ultimately that did matter because the Dallas Cowboys reigned victorious. And I want to talk about some of the key components of this game. Obviously, let's start with Cooper Rush. I How mean, not? what an impressive performance by the backup quarterback. I think that everyone was concerned when Dak obviously did not end up playing. But you know what? He was able to pull through leading a game-winning drive at the end. I mean, I just was – I don't Listen, know what more you could ask for. I'm going to be real honest. That, like – with like three minutes to play in the first in the first half, I I didn't think it was happening. I thought the Cowboys were going to lose. You did tweet. I thought they might even embarrass themselves in the second half. The way that he obviously played a great game, but the way that he responded to earlier adversity was incredible. He looked like a different player in the second half. Mike McCarthy talked about this in the post game, and he said this is the guy that we've all, we've been seeing for a while. This is why we chose him, and I think that he made a lot of people eat crow. And honestly, good for him. You know what? I'm I'm happily enjoying mine for breakfast this morning. So, <laughs> um, but you know what? I, I mentioned who he uh, who he ended the game with with Amari Cooper. I want to talk about Cooper some more. We had a uh, two wide receivers with 100 plus yard receiving games. Amari Cooper is just incredible. I love the dynamic at the end where he and CD were trying to fight over that game winning touchdown, but. What a performance by Coop. My man is doing all of this with a bum hamstring, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, he's been hurt all year. It was an ankle in training camp. It's been a hamstring for most of the season. We'll get to it later. He's literally massaging his hammy with a softball on the sideline. Mm -hmm. And he goes out and makes the two plays that win this game. I, I don't know if they win if he doesn't do the juggling, whatever <laughs> the hell that was. It looked like pinball. Yeah. Comes down with it. And then, yeah, I mean, if you get him one-on-one -on -one against man coverage in the red zone, he's going to do his thing. Straight up sticky fingers. All right, let's go to the other side of the ball, too, because you know what? I just have to give this defense props. They've been so incredible this season. This game was no different. Holding the Vikings to, what, uh, 177 passing yards. Justin Jefferson How was irrelevant in this game. One and, and touchdown. True. They scored on their first possession and didn't score another touchdown the rest of Mm -hmm. of the way mm -hmm. and that's I almost feel bad for the defense because this was their best game and they're getting overshadowed by Coop they are and then deservedly so like when you have a backup come in and play that way on the road I get it but these guys balled out man mm -hmm. Micah Parsons this was his best game as a pro football player he that's was like, everywhere that's like the people that are truly rich they don't gotta talk about it and I'm I'm here for that like literally like <laughs> I'm just saying. They're on that level. They might be on okay. that level at this okay. point. Like, the, the glow up is real with this team. Holding the Vikings to one for 13 on conversions in third down. I mean, what more could you ask for? It was such an impressive victory for this Dallas Cowboys team. You know what I could ask for? Oh. All of that being said, and we're all very happy about it, <laughs> I could ask for Dak Prescott back. That would be nice. I'm just saying. Well, I'm you know what? Um, we're going to actually dive into this matchup a little bit more. And what went down? We've got... CBS Sports analyst Bright McFadden joining us next. Cowboys Star at Night is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T, and by Favor, the official on-demand food delivery partner of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. You know, for all we talk about Cooper Rush, and deservedly so, you know, the, the Dallas defense played pretty well on Sunday night, would you say? I would say I, so. I feel like when a backup quarterback balls out, that kind of gets overshadowed. But it was an amazing performance. So who better to bring in, somebody that knows 
a few things about defense. A two-time Super Bowl champion cornerback, Bryant McFadden, joins us. What's up, What's man? What's up? Thanks for coming on. Man, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So I, I don't expect you to know this. People watching this probably do. As an unabashed LSU homer, <laughs> I was absolutely devastated that Patrick Peterson wasn't a part of that Cowboys Vikings game. As his co-host on the All Things Covered podcast, what what what's the vibe coming out of that game and, and where the Cowboys are? And I'm especially curious too, like for a guy like Pat who's still playing while hosting a podcast, what's that like? And I assume what's gotta be frustrating when you can't play because of an injury. Uh, it's frustrating for Pat. This is the first time in his career he, he he's had to miss uh, ball games because of an injury. So it's clearly unfamiliar territory for him. Not to mention Sunday night football, the national stage home game against the Dallas Cowboys, one of the hottest teams in National Football League. Not being able to be there uh, was difficult for him, but he embraced it as a professional uh, should embrace injuries. Uh, trying to get the guys ready, trying to be an extra coach, to say the least. Uh, but you know it was eating them up, and it still is, that he wasn't able to participate uh, in that big-time ball game because it meant a lot for both teams, clearly, but clearly for Minnesota. They need all their soldiers on deck to be able to make a significant push before the season is over. Playoff push. Ab absolutely. And so, I'm, again, you're, you're in tight with Pat, obviously, and therefore the Vikings. But from your perspective as somebody who's played – and is covering this league right now. What was your impression of this Cowboys performance? Specifically, like I said, the way the defense was able to hold that offense down on Sunday. Yo, it was big time. The reason why it was big time, anytime you lose your starting quarterback, and it was basically a game time decision, it puts all the pressure on the defense, right? And you're playing against Kirk Cousins until Sunday night's ball game. Kirk Cousins was playing pretty good football. You know, you have a superstar-like play at the running back position and Dalvin Cook you're going against, not to mention two experienced wide receivers in Adam Thielen and, and Justin Jefferson. So for the Cowboys' defense to be able to weather the storm until their offense kind of picked up uh, their momentum in the second half was huge. And that's something I think, <clears throat> me personally, I love seeing adversity take place for certain ball clubs that have championship aspirations to see how they handle that. Because at some point in time, the Cowboys will be fully healthy, right? I know you guys are crossing your fingers when it comes to that. But at some point in time, the Cowboys will be fully healthy. And if they're fully healthy, playing the way they've been able to play when they weren't fully healthy, and you put all of that in the pot, you got a nice pot of gumbo that will be served to whoever wants to eat some of that gumbo. So me personally, I think it was a huge, huge opportunity for the Cowboys to really show the NFL world, like, yo, we can win ball games defensively, and when Dak Prescott is back healthy and you put that – all into the equation, man. Look out. This thing will be entertaining for Cowboy fans. Wow. I mean, you mentioned gumbo and Dave is over here just Love like in, in a good place. But I want to I want to ask you some more, too, because this this defense has been really impressive holding Minnesota to just 7.7 percent conversions on third down. You know, Basham's all around the field. Randy Gregory's making plays. Let's Micah Parsons is next level. Right. But this secondary is really what's standing out to me. And, and I know it's been a topic of conversation obviously Trayvon Diggs but Anthony Brown has had himself a nice season too I want to get your thoughts on really truly what Dan Quinn has been able to do and what you're seeing with this secondary specifically and how they've truly elevated their game this season consistency uh that's what I'm seeing compared to what I didn't see last year from Dallas consistency everyone is doing what they're supposed to do you don't see a lot of missed assignments you don't see a lot of wide receivers or pass catchers running through the secondary wide open Everyone is doing what they're supposed to do, not to mention they're flying around. They're tackling. Nate, tell me the last time you've seen a quality secondary from Dallas tackle as well, as well as this secondary has been able to do so far in 2021. That has been a huge, huge plus for their success, tackling well and doing what the assignment calls for you to do, and they're flying around. I see a team, when I watch the Cowboys, especially the secondary, because I am biased, some of the best players play in the secondary. Let's keep it real, right? <laughs> in the world. Some of the best athletes in the world play in the secondary. But when I see guys flying around having fun, I see a group of guys that actually like each other. They love each other. And when you have that relationship off the football field, no question, it's going to be magical when you're on the football field because you actually love the person who you're working with. You know what I mean? That's, and that's in business in general, right? If you have a business that people don't, that the employees don't like each other, nine times out of ten you're not going to be as successful as you can be, as you could because you don't like each other. What I see from Dallas, 
especially on the defensive side, you got a group of guys that love each other and they're willing to go to war and fight for each other, right or wrong. That's the that's the mindset. And that's what we're starting to see from the Cowboys, especially in the secondary. That's the recipe that works for us as well. I'm guessing for you too. and Pat as well. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad you, no question. I'm glad you touched on chemistry though, because that's I can't help it. Like you we're around this team all the time. We see you're absolutely right about how they feel about each other, the chemistry that they have. So I'm looking for anybody that I can ask about this, and who better than you? You were on three Super Bowl teams. You won two of them. When you were a player on those teams, when did you start to kind of feel that you had something special? Because that's kind of what we're dealing with here, where you're like, I don't know, man, this feels different than most years. Like, is that – did you feel that way, and when did you start to feel that way? I, I won two Super Bowls. I think the first Super Bowl, we kind of – felt that way and we had a we had a losing skid we had like a four game losing skid in 2005 and the first game that kind of jump started our Super Bowl mentality was a game against Minnesota where we had to win we couldn't afford to lose any more ball games it was either Minnesota Chicago and the way we came together and just pretty much just you know took just only focus on the guys in the building and not to the the mall music that was outside you know we we started to get things rolling so I think towards the end of the season, my to, to the first Super Bowl is when we kind of felt like, yo, we can if we get into the playoffs, it's gonna be ugly. We we don't see anybody beating us because we were already in playoff mode in like week eleven, week twelve, something like that. So the second Super Bowl, we felt that way in training camp. It was just something <laughs> special. Like in training camp, the vibe was like, yo, we got a group of guys that's all dialed in. They're buying into the system. And the thing that stuck out to me, because I was a four, four, uh, I was in my fourth year, I saw the depth that we had. So I'm like, okay, if we lose a guy at this spot, if we lose a guy at that spot, we should be okay. You know what I mean? We should be okay. So I think training camp was the first time I saw a championship-like glimpse for the second Super Bowl, but for the first one, it was midseason. I love I, – I, I feel like he just kind of described what we're dealing with here in Dallas for the second one at least. So, hey – Cowboy, I mean, one would be a start for the Cowboys, right? I like getting big picture. <laughs> Brian McFadden, thanks so much for joining us today. When we come back, we'll focus in on this upcoming game against the Denver Broncos. We'll be right back. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, Dave. So um, we've definitely covered off on how impressive that Dallas Cowboys performance was this past week. But now um, let's switch gears and forward. look. We're moving forward. We are on to Denver. We're moving forward. And I need to know. Are you going to start Cooper Rush or Dak Prescott? And actually, though, before we get your opinions, a pretty famous former Cowboy himself Fair. had uh, some interesting thoughts on the situation. Gil Brandt said, if I'm the Cowboys, I hold Dak out this week against the Broncos, who have pretty much thrown up the white flag. And when he says white flag, for those of you that have been hiding under a rock, uh, the Broncos did trade away strip sack Milla to L.A. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the greatest commercial of all time. I can't not say it. Are you kidding me? Come on. I just love the way... <laughs> that people like people just flip from one extreme to the other so quickly. Like we did this with Terrence Steele already. Like people were writing Dak's obituary, and now Terrence Steele's an All-Pro. And I'm not talking trash on Terrence Steele, but you see how this goes. Yeah, now time. everybody's like, "Oh my God, we're gonna die!" And now well, they they want wow. David Hellman sitting over here just stealing lines right out of my playbook. Keep going. But all like now it's like, oh, Dak can sit another week. If he's healthy, he should play. Yeah. If he's healthy, he should play. I can't answer that. Only the Cowboys know if he's healthy enough to play. But I'm not sitting Dak if he can play in this game. Yeah, I mean, listen, like I am really pumped for Cooper Rush and what he was able to put together this last week. I think it showed that he is a lot better than a lot of people were giving him credit for. And granted, he didn't have a lot of uh, game tape either. But you know what? Yeah, if my starting franchise quarterback is ready to play and going to take us and get us to 7-1, 
probably going to take that. Start the yeah. player that gives you the best chance to win. 1,000%. Can we talk about mortality some more? Like, do you want to get existential with this? No, or we don't need to do that. We have other football topics? Okay. We might have other football topics to talk about. I All mean, right. listen, it's fine. We'll we'll talk about some things that are be a little less scary because, you know, the spooky season is beyond us. Guys, uh, coming up next, though, we're going to talk about some terrifying trades that went down in this league. Stay with us. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. Buongiorno! It's Italian for hello. Did oh, you know that? No, thank you so much for that lesson. Some idiot gave us a telestrator. Do we need it? No. Are we going to have fun with it? Absolutely. Yeah? Let, let, show me, Caden, we got so much good stuff from the game to get to. Show me the good, this is the good stuff. This is what I'm talking about. Dak Prescott, mad that he can't play, does he care? No, that's his brother. This is brother Cooper Rush. That's why I love Dak. He's such a leader. Art he just runner. wants everyone on the team to win. And I mean, if you don't feel something after watching this, then you're not human. I watched it 10 times. Mm, so I mean, it was all over there. A little there. weird. Shut up. All right, go on to the next one. Shut, this, is, this is what I'm all about. As somebody with terrible lower back pain, I identify You're with this. You're aging yourself. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to sit down on a softball tonight, which this is a great meme. Listen, it's a good meme. It's Semantics. a great meme even. Semantics. It's a softball, not a tennis ball. It's but fine. we still love it. Look, the Cowboys might be worth $5 billion, but some things just work. And a softball to your sore muscles is one of them. Take it from me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. A guy with bad lumbar support. Show me the final one. This is from our friend, Co Wetzel. Jesus is a Cowboys fan. I mean, listen, they always say that God wants to watch America's team, so I feel like it's only right that his son is a fan as well. Co, I hope you're watching this probably in a bar, and I would just like to invite you back onto the show at uh, your nearest convenience. Okay, well, while we try and get Co back on the show, uh, there's a couple other transactions that have gone down. There's none going to be happening today for the Dallas Cowboys, we don't believe, but you know what? Some in the past have definitely incurred, and I want to get... David, you to play with Don't this handy dandy little yeah. machine here. Let's match that. up the respective Cowboys player with their compensation. Amari Cooper. I just love how we're we just we're like we have a telestrator. We're gonna do stuff with it. Damn it! You've got Joey Galloway, Roy Williams, and Charles Haley. Okay, I remember Joey Galloway. I remember because people are still mad about it <laughs> all these years later. <laughs> these are the two that I don't 100% remember. Okay, okay. I think. I think, therefore, I am to go back to the existential thing. Sure, sure, sure. And then Charles Haley going way back. I think that's right. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. All right, let's see if he was right. Oh! I still got it wrong. Wow. I suck at this. Totally fine. It's only the second time we've done this, so he probably should Look, remember. But that's two okay. of them worked out and two didn't, okay? That's all, right, all I got. You know what? Let's move on to the league level and see if you have a little bit of better luck, if you will. So we've got Steve Young, Randy Moss, T.O., and, of course, Brett Favre. Match them up, if you will. I'll remember this one until the day I die because it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> the Patriots got the best receiver of all time for that. It's unbelievable. That's criminal. I'm guessing here. I'm dating myself. I'm got Steve Young. I'm guessing was worth a first. He looks so young there. Terrell Owens, I think maybe a second. Okay, okay. And then this. I don't even know if I was alive when the Packers traded for Brett Favre. Sure. Sorry, old people that might be watching this. All right. So final answers. Know. Let's see how close we are in that one. Damn it, Dave. Okay, I'm, okay. I got Randy Moss right. I told you I remembered that one. Dave. Losing. All right. Well, while Dave continues to lose, the Dallas Cowboys are set to win because they've got a couple important players returning to the team. We're going to break down which ones are going to have the most impact coming up next. Cowboys Star at Night was brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T, and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. I thought, was that, I thought that was you. Okay. You, you said you were going to intro. For the record, we get paid to do this. Very <laughs> handsomely, I might add. <laughs> Probably, that's probably an exaggeration. Maybe a little bit. Welcome back to the Star at Night. 
Cowboys aren't doing a whole lot at the trade deadline, but hey, we get paid to make bad TV. They get paid to play good football. Speak for yourself. And they've got some help coming their way, Kelsey Charles. Ooh. Maybe not this week, maybe not the next, but the Cowboys have quite a few talented players on their way back from injured reserve. Michael Gallup might play against the Broncos. Ooh. Starting to hear whispers here at the Star about Demarcus Lawrence getting ready to practice. Say it ain't so. so the question is, who are you most excited about contributing to this team in the second half of the season? I mean, I think the answer is obvious. Um, Tank Lawrence. Give me Demarcus Lawrence all day. The heartbeat of this defense. He hasn't been on the field, obviously, lately, but that hasn't stopped this defense from making an impact. But just imagine when we do get him back, you guys. I mean, these are things of nightmares for opposing teams. Having Randy Gregory perform the way that he has, coupled with Demarcus Lawrence on the other side of the line, Give me that all day. Inject it into my veins. Like, I need it. I love it. I want it. I can't wait. I'm so glad we already botched the intro to this segment because have you ever heard it's bad television to just agree? Like, why do you think Skip Bayless makes more money than we do? He's bad at what he, does. he just argues with everybody. <laughs> so if I'm up here agreeing with you, what kind of schmuck do I look like? But that's, uh, you're right. How much time do you have? You're absolutely, well, good point. You're absolutely right. Demarcus Lawrence is the best player on this defense when he's fully healthy. Randy Gregory playing like an absolute monster. It's not a knock on Michael Gallup, but this offense has been fine without him. This defense can go to another level when he's out there. I'm aiming for like, Tank, take your time, dude. I'm not trying to rush you. You could eat me if you wanted to. But Thanksgiving, maybe? Think about Thanksgiving. How fun would that be? I don't be? hate it, you guys. National audience. I, we'll see. We'll see. Until then. We'll be here to keep you abreast of it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back.